Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. I know a lot of people saw my September TBR so I'm really excited and I hope a lot of you are back to see the October TBR game. <laughs> Hi, SB from the future here. I wanted to address the name change. So if you came from my TikTok, you know that my TikTok username is All Rad Reads. My last name is All Red, and so I thought it'd be funny to do like All Rad Reads because Sarah Beth something. I couldn't get like an S bookish word to go with Sarah Beth, and I wanted it to be like alliteration. And I loved All Rad Reads, and I thought it was really fun. And then when I came over to YouTube, I was like, okay, I kind of talk about more than just books, so I should change it to something more broad. And and so I came up with Sarah Best Signature and I just cannot bring myself to change my TikTok. Like I have so much emotional connection to my TikTok being All Rad Reads. And I was talking about it with my husband and I've just decided I'm gonna switch everything back to All Rad Reads. Instead of changing my TikTok to Sarah Best Signature, I'm switching my YouTube to All Rad Reads. So that is this name and its origin and why I've switched. So same content, nothing is changing. I just am switching my username so it's consistent across everything because it's my original username and I'm, I'm, I have like a huge emotional attachment to it. Anyways, back to the video. If you have somehow missed this, which I'm hoping you haven't, but maybe you have, and this is exciting news, I have decided to sell my game, but I'm revamping it. So it will be going from this board that you normally see to this board and will be coming in a box complete with the real cards, pieces, everything instead of my foam board construction paper game I've got going on right now. The new game is going to be called Shrink the Shelf. And if you aren't someone who's like trying to shrink your physical TBR, there will be two sets of rules. One for people that are trying to just read physical books that they own and one for people that are just trying to read, trying to make decisions on what books they want to read each month, period. And I think that'll be really fun and hopefully a lot of people get to play. Because of this, the new game, the way I wanted to structure it, I want you to be able to play it all in one sitting. Whereas like if you've, you're familiar with my videos with this, my game TBR checkout challenge, it takes me multiple months or like plays to get through the whole game because I'm just trying to get six books books. So my wonderful math genius husband has is doing some math based off of the spaces on the board that are going to for the new game, it will basically tell you which die you need to use or multiple die. So like I have a pack of like what I would think most people would consider like D and D dice, it has like an eight sided die a 20 sided die, all that stuff, a variety of dice are going to come in the game. And based off of how many books you want to read that month or put on your TBR for whatever you're doing, if you're trying to do this for like a weekly challenge, or this is how you pick your readathon books, whatever, you can pick, the game will have instructions on how many dice you need. Since I wanna now start playing correctly, I need to finish, cause I'm like six slots from the end, I think. And then we need to go through the whole game. As you know, I normally only pick six books. The way it's going to work now is I'm gonna use multiple dice. So I'm using two six-sided dice and then the normal eight-sided die that I use in hopes that I can get somewhere between five to seven books because that's kind of the range that I would like. And that is the math that Jordan has done in hopes that I can achieve that. So we're gonna see how it works. It's gonna be my first time attempting it. I'm optimistic. Something else that's really fun that's a part of the new game, Shrink the Shelf, that's not a part of the current game, which is one of my biggest issues with it, is there's no way for me to change the categories or like the prompts. Like I could add more prompts to a category, but I couldn't like add a whole new category. And something I had originally wanted to do when I made the game was like add a seasonal category, but I wasn't sure how to like incorporate it. And I was like, okay, maybe I'll like redo the game before I wanna put seasonal books in there. So what I'm doing this month is I'm using this cute little fall mug and I'm gonna be replacing the celeb shot category which is the red category with the solo cup on it and if I land on that one I'm gonna pick one of my fall prompts and I only have like maybe like 10 or 12 in here and so because of this issue this is something that I was really trying to figure out when I was making shrink the shelf and something that's really cool is so like this is what the board looks like and then this is kind of like a mock-up of what it'll look like with the tiles on it because if you've played a board game recently in the past you know few years you know that most games like have little tiles you punch out. So what will happen is you're gonna punch out the little book spines, you'll shuffle them and place them on the board. And then we're gonna have like additional little seasonal ones that you could add. So you could get the fall add on pack or whatever. I don't have technical terms for it yet, but then you would get fall little tiles in the fall cards. So then you could incorporate that into your board. And you know, I'm thinking, at least for me, I'm doing this mostly for me selfishly. I hope that you guys enjoy that element if you do 
play. I think it'll be really cool and add something that the game doesn't currently have because obviously right now the board is set in stone. I can't change the order the prompts are in. So I think this will be something that's really cool. All of that to say, if you're interested in buying the game or helping, we're gonna be sending out our first email via our newsletter soon about the game. And I'm really excited because I'm gonna incorporate you guys into it and I want you guys to help us with some parts of the game and I think it'll be so much fun. So please sign up for the newsletter. It's the first link in the caption below. Please sign up and that way you'll know when the game is being sold and everything like that. And I'm really excited. I think you guys are, those of you that are excited about it, I think you're gonna have a really good time. Let me take a, take a break real quick. All that to say, now let's go through my September round and figure out what all points I have. Obviously I'm gonna be checking out in this round and hopefully everything will make sense. And if it doesn't make sense, please leave comments down below because I wanna make sure the game makes sense when I before I sell it to you guys because I want everything to be perfect. My monthly challenge this month was to, every, for every five books I read for my physical TBR, I could add two tokens to my shelf. So I did read six books off my physical TBR, so I will be getting the two bonus tokens. So now let's go through the prompts and if I read them. So let's start off with, I had Thriller and I read the last word. I gave this four and a half, four stars. This will be in my September wrap up. I thought this was crazy, very fun for fall because it was so spooky, even though it was set at the beach. I thought I knew what was going on at many points, did not was not correct. <laughs> really enjoyed this. This is one of the best thrillers I've read, I feel like, in a while. We'll get this one out of the way. A book with a number in the title. I was doing the seven year slip. I didn't finish. I literally barely started. I had my parents visiting. I didn't get into this as much as I wanted to. It sounds really good, and I'm definitely reading it this month. So I did not get to finish this one. Here's an interesting thing. I need your opinion. So with the new game, because you don't know how many books you're gonna get, and like some people could put 12, I don't wanna add a roll for any book you don't finish, like as the punishment, so to speak. So I'm trying to figure out what the punishment should be. I thought maybe you lose a book token. Maybe you lose two book tokens. What are our thoughts? Can I get some feedback here? I don't want to do something that people feel strongly about for the game, but I'm not sure. So I didn't finish this. I'm thinking right now I'm going to go with lose two book tokens. That sounds right, but y'all let me know what your thoughts are because I'm just not sure. So I did not get to finish this one, but it, I started it and it's so good. So I think I'm going to immediately read it this month before I read any of the books that we're putting on the TBR today. Fantasy, I want to think we picked these twisted bonds. Okay, I gave this four stars. Somehow like transported me to like OG book talk. I read the original one when it first came out, but this like took me back to Faye, peak Akatar from Blood and Ash, like all of those energy. So I don't know if I just felt like nostalgic for that. Also, LOL, you guys have probably never seen me with glasses, but my contacts are really jacked up right now. So glasses it is. But I really enjoyed this. I probably should have reread a little bit more of the first one other than the summary I read, because there were a little bit where I was like, oh, what did that mean? What did that mean? But I really liked it. Could have been better for sure, now that I'm thinking about it, yeah. But I really liked it. Romance, I read Wildfire. Five million stars. I loved this so much. I might have loved this more than Icebreaker. I might have loved this more than Icebreaker. Russ, top tier book boyfriend. I'm obsessed. This was so good. It does not really give fall energy. It is set at a summer camp, but like, I mean, it comes out, I think on October 3rd, you need to read it. You need to read it. I mean, look at how cute they are. You need to read it. It was so good. More than one person on the cover. I read The Kiss Curse. Why was this better than The X-Hex to me? I loved this. I loved The X-Hex, but I loved this. This was so good. So perfect for fall. If you haven't read The X-Hex and The Kiss Curse, hop on it. Five stars. I have no complaints, no edits. I freaking loved Wells. I loved Gwen. So good. Such a good, fun, not spooky, but fun fall read. Oh, a book my friend chose. My friend Kristen chose The Wishing Game. I really enjoyed this. There were some parts that were like a little weird to me that I didn't love. So I gave it four stars. There was just a couple things that I don't want to say gave, they just gave me weird vibes. But this was definitely like magical realism really made me think of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, like super made me think of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which I think is like the, the author even says, I think some descriptions say that it's supposed to be similar to that, but I really enjoyed it. It was really cute. Definitely recommend it, except for a few things. <laughs> 
the f the things that were weird in this were weird. I'll talk about it in my September wrap up, but the part of me is like, is it three and a half? It might be, I'm not sure. And then finally a book recommended to me, our book I bought because of TikTok and I read Assistant to the Villain and I gave this four and a half, four, let's, Let's check again. I gave this four stars. This was really fun. I really want to read the next one. The way it ended definitely set me up to want to read the next one. I love these bread, bread? I love these red sprayed edges. This book ended up being way more fun than I thought it was going to be. It's definitely like quirky. So if you're not looking for like a quirky, funny fantasy, don't read this. It definitely feels more modern because it's an assist, uh, the villain literally has an assistant, like a whole office building essentially. And I thought it was really fun. With that being said, we are gonna go ahead and get into the game. Hey me from the future again. Realized in editing, I did not pick a monthly challenge card. So I don't know why I'm shuffling them like that. Okay. I was like, let's look at all the prompt. I can't see the camera's quite small. Anyway, so let's pick one. Okay. Earn a book token for every arc I read this month. That's great because I'm going to do what I'm calling Arctober. Um, my net galley score is crap. So we're going to work on fixing it. Cause it is, I mean like literally it's awful. I think it's like 15%. I read the physical ones that come. I'm just really bad at reading the digital arcs on NetGalley. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna keep the same power ups up there because we're changing it for how the game is working. Moving forward with the new game, Shrink the Shelf. And in order to do it in one playthrough, like I said, we're gonna use this, these dice because my husband did the math and based off of how many books I want, which is five to eight roughly, this would get me through the whole board, hopefully. It's a little difficult because I have to finish this game, but I wanna get through the whole board. So we're gonna roll until we get through the whole thing. We will see how many books that is exactly. Instead of the celeb shot, which is the red one with the solo cup, we're gonna be using the fall mug, which has some fun fall prompts, which I really hope we land on because I'm working on the fall TBR. We are up here from the last round and we're going to hopefully finish. Okay, so we've got a two plus another two plus a five. So we have nine. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. Okay, so let's check out really quick and then we'll come back to this. So round one, I played July. I had Sorcery of Thorns, Forget Me Not, The Darkening, Practice Makes Perfect, Curse of Shadows and Ice, Things We Never Got Over, and The Lost of Gary. Red, 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 and red. I read all of them, so I got a plus two and plus one from my challenge. Now round two was August, Warcross, Divine Rivals, Take the Lead, In a New York Minute, Yours Truly, and The Well of Ascension. Red, 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 did not get to. So I did not get the TBR bonus, but I got plus five for the challenge. Finally, round three, this past month, September, Assistant to the Villain, Twisted Bonds, Wildfire, The Kissed Curse, The Wishing Game, The Last Word, and The Seven Year Slip. Red, 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 and did not get to. So did not get the TBR bonus, but I got plus two for the challenge bonus, bringing my total to eight. This was a previous power-up purchase, which was I got an extra token for every fantasy I read during this game. I read 13 fantasies, so I'm changing this, and I'm gonna say I get an extra token for every three fantasies I read, so I'm going to get plus four. My current total is 34 book tokens. I have not decided what I'm gonna do with this. I'm gonna wait until the new game starts. All right, so we got a celeb shot, which right now is our fall prompts. So let's pull. A book set during fall. Ooh, exciting. I think I have a lot of these, a book set during fall. Let's peruse. So the top row today is like my priority fall TBR and then like my second tier fall TBR is on the second shelf. I'm not sure which of these might be set during fall. I know this one is Shades of Rust and Ruin because it has like a Halloween curse. So it's an option. When is either of these sets? Uh, 
The Ravens is also set in fall because it's set during going back to a college campus, you know, August, September time. Okay, so I guess also September house. So our options are September house, the Ravens, or Shades of Rust and Ruin. Shades of Rust and Ruin is about a girl whose family is under like a Halloween curse and she draws like this magical world and, a, and kind of like ends up in it. So that's that one. And The Ravens is about the witchy sorority and a girl doesn't realize she's a witch until she's in the sorority. And then the September house is like a cursed house that has hauntings and blood drips down the walls every September. Very spooky. They're all on my fall TBR. The question is which one do I really wanna read? I've had these two for a while and this is a newer one that I've gotten and I kind of really want to read this, which I know kind of defeats the purpose, but I think I'm going to read The September House. Sorry, not sorry. Okay. Okay, so five plus four plus two. So that one's going to be 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ooh, the fun one. Okay, I fall into a reading slump. Play this card for a free mood read. Exciting. Okay, great. Wow, we are having a good time so far. Number three. Or, you know, it doesn't really matter because we're just going till we're done. Okay. Oh, these are some big numbers. Five. Plus six and another six 17 i think hopefully my math is right on that one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen number prompt so worst goodreads rating okay this should be fun let's see what I can get if I check Goodreads. My Goodreads, when I like look at my books on my want to read and everything, it's never in like the order that I'm telling it to put it in. You know what I mean? If I say put it from best rating to worst, it's still like not in that order and I don't understand how that works at all. Okay, we're gonna sort by average rating. Do the reverse. That one's a three, four, eight. But see, like they're, okay, they're kind of in order now. They weren't to start. Okay, but I think the lowest one I have, so I have two that are, th no, I have, no, I have two that are three, four, eights, but one is on the cart right now. Darling Girl, it says it's a three, four, eight, which I think is literally the lowest of all the ones I own, which I wanted to read this anyways. I'm surprised it's so low because one of my friends really enjoyed this. So we'll be doing Darling Girl for that one. Okay, let's go again. We've got three books so far. Four, two, and a five. So 11. One, two, three, four, five, six. I went the wrong way. We were here. One, two, three, four, five, Oop, let's switch hands. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Genre. And we've got historical fiction. That one's tough. I don't know how many of those I have. I genuinely do not know what historical fiction I have left. This is a historical romance, half a soul, right? It's like a Regency fantasy romance. Right now, we're gonna call that historical fiction until we can find something else. <laughs> Don't think anything else on the top shelf is considered historical fiction. This is definitely not. There's no way any of that is either. Fantasy. Let's spin her around. Oh, I think the Immortalists. Okay, I think this one is kind of uh, historical fiction. It starts in 1969. And then it spans several decades. Getting a head a headband? I'm getting a headache from wearing my glasses. I don't think it's necessarily historical fiction, but like it's set a lot in the past versus right now. So that's 
these are our options. We're doing our best. So I have had these, I've had this one forever. I really don't feel like either of these are historical fiction, but we gotta work with what we've got here. And I've had Half a Soul, not forever, but like for a while. This is tough. This technically calls it a literary thriller. You know what? I just feel like I really wanna read this one. It's technically, I know people have said it's like Regency romance, but it has Fae. So a Regency romance to me would be historical fiction. So I think we're gonna just call this like fantasy historical fiction. And that's gonna cover this prompt. All right, we're up to four books. I don't know if we're gonna get six, which I'll be kind of sad about. I kind of want six. So four, five, and five. So that's 14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Ooh, another fall one. Okay. A crime slash thriller book. Got a lot of these. So we could do the naturals, lock every door, in my dreams I hold a knife, or none of this is true. These are the four big ones that I really wanted to get through this fall. Which one do we feel like is the most fall? I feel like, I feel like In My Dreams I Hold a Knife is the most fall feeling. But I've heard this one is crazy. I've wanted to read Lock Every Door for a while. My only problem with the naturals is that then I'm starting a series. So we'll get rid of this one. Maybe it'll be the mood read. Again, y'all, I have like the back of a 900 year old human being. Okay, we'll, we'll skip this one. So we're down to In My Dreams I Hold a Knife or None of This Is True. This one says dark campus and an even, in a darker look at friendship, love, obsession, and ambition. I just feel like this one's giving dark academia fall energy. I'm gonna go with this one, which is hysterical because like a year ago, I thought this book absolutely did not sound or look like it was for me. Then I saw someone's video and the way they described it, I was like, wait, I really wanna read that. So now I have it. Okay, we've got five. I don't know if we can, there's only two, four, six. Okay, you know what? We'll roll just one six to get a sixth book. It's my game, I can make the rules. Okay, five. One, two, three, four, five. Was that right? One, two, three, four, yeah. A book with an animal on the cover, okay. Well, I know the ravens, we already pulled that one. Okay, this may be how we get it on here. Okay, I know, ironically, this is also gonna have a raven, a multitude of dreams. I am super surprised that this doesn't have a cat. Okay, I think, I think we'll just stick with these three. So the ravens, a multitude of dreams, or the long game. All in the fall TBR. Doing pretty good getting books from the fall TBR. You know what, we'll just, we'll make the decision easy. I've said I needed to read this, I need to read it. Witchy sorority, done. I really wanna read The Long Game. These are both newer acquisition. No, why do I always say that? Newer purchases, we'll say that. So I already did one new one, I should do an old one. And then we just need to roll, boom, oh my gosh. Okay, well that is vastly unfortunate. Okay, if I had rolled three dice, there would have been no way I didn't finish. So we're gonna pretend like I didn't do that. Okay, boom, there we go. Now I'm done. So come November, I would then buy one of these power-ups that would like apply to the game I'm currently playing. So I could either buy this, I could buy all of them if I wanted, but it would apply in retrospect. So I finish four series this month, I would get four tokens if I bought this ticket at the end slash start of the next game. End of this game, start of the next one. I hope that makes sense, but that is it for the new method. I'm really excited about our prompts. That leaves us with a very dark looking stack. How fall of me. Here we are. 
September House, Darling Girl, Half a Soul, The Ravens, and In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife. And then we'll have a mood read on top of this. And I'm going, I think it's safe to assume that my mood read will be something from this top shelf. Cause these are my fall priority books. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had a good time. I hope you're excited about the game. Let me know any thoughts, anything you think would be really cool to see in the game. I mean, really, just let me know anything you've got and please sign up for the newsletter and I will see you guys back here for my September wrap up.